Today I'm making a creamy cheese sauce for cheesy spaghetti. Plus, I'm going to make crispy golden chicken cutlets. This is going to be good. I am going to show you the cheesy spaghetti first, but technically I make this last when I'm serving this. So here in a preheated pan over a low heat, I'm adding around a tablespoon of butter and you want to make sure it's on low because you don't want to burn this cheese sauce because it'll separate and it just will not fare well for this recipe. So I lowered the temp and I've melted this butter. So what I'm gonna do next is add probably like a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, you could use regular, and another quarter teaspoon of granulated onion powder. Seasonings and spices, the ratios of what you prefer is up to you. This is what I start with. So I've mixed that. Now I'm going to add an eight ounce block of cream cheese. This is actually the Nufachel cheese, but cream cheese works for this. And it doesn't look like much now, but I'm just going to break this apart and I want to melt this down until it's creamy and combined well. And it will take time and again, low heat. Okay, so I've used my whisk at this point and you see how it's starting to get really melty? That's what you want. In the meantime, I have boiled salted water and I'm gonna add a pound of spaghetti pasta. The package instructions call for it to cook between 11 and 13 minutes. So my cheese, is already melty, the cream cheese here. So now I'm ready to add the rest of the ingredients. Here I am working with 12 fluid ounces of evaporated milk. I love to use evaporated milk. Essentially what I'm making is like this cheese sauce that you would use for mac and cheese. And I always opt for evaporated milk. You can use half and half or heavy cream, it's up to you. I'm going to combine and mix this well. And I want it to become creamy and sort of simmer. Again, working with a low heat. So I am using a mild cheddar cheese. This is eight ounces that I've shredded. It's going in. And at this point, you just want to make everything creamy, cheesy, melty goodness. Give it a taste and adjust the salt and seasoning to your preference. But this is gonna take some time. And eventually, you'll end up with a creamy, cheesy sauce just like this. I'm gonna shut off the heat and let this hang out. And this sauce awaits my pasta. So my pasta is ready and it's going in. You can reserve at least a cup of the pasta water because it'll always bring the cheese sauce or the creaminess of this pasta dish back to life. So if you do kind of make it ahead of time, have that hot pasta liquid on the side to bring it back to life right before serving. So I'm just gonna give this a mix and I did switch out my metal tongs. I don't wanna scrape the pan. And I'm just gonna mix this well and it's ready. And you can see I have the chicken cutlets ready on the side here, but I'm gonna show you how I made those. So right after mixing, I'm gonna serve, but the golden crispy cutlets, here we go. So I'm working with a little over a pound and a half of chicken cutlets, it's four, and I've pounded them a little bit more even. They were already cut thin, but I'm gonna go over the dredging station here. I'm taking like three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour and I'm gonna season it with onion powder. I'm gonna add garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Sometimes I add Italian dried seasoning or herbs. I also like to add paprika, sometimes lemon pepper. You definitely can do that. Season the dredge how you prefer. You could also season the chicken cutlets before dredging as well. I just like to scale back on the salt because everything else I'm making, especially like the pasta, you know, it's kind of salty, but it really is up to you. So I'm gonna give this a good mix. And then for the next pie plate that I'm using, I, I like using pie plates, by the way, is the egg wash. And I'm going with two large eggs into this pie plate, which makes a great dredging dish because it's flat and it's really wide. It works really well. And I'm gonna add just a splash of water, one or two tablespoons of cold water. And I noticed there's shell right here, so I'm gonna remove the shell. But as I was doing this, as you can see, my fork slid into the pie plate. So scramble it up or beat the egg wash, and that's that. And you can also season each ingredient, the flour, the egg, and the panko. It's really up to you and to your preference. So for the crusty part of this. I'm going with panko breadcrumbs. You can do regular breadcrumbs or seasoned breadcrumbs. Sometimes I add Parmesan cheese and herbs. It's up to you. So now let's dredge. And I'm using a fork. Typically you could use the 
dry hand, wet hand method, which is what I do, but I'm just gonna go with a fork because I'm holding my camera with the other hand. So now that it's coated, I'm just going to place it on a small baking sheet and repeat the process. I can handle it with my hands at this point because it's coated. Okay, so now for the other cutlets. My cutlets are coated and they're ready for the preheated fry oil. I also want to mention cook time always varies. If you're working with really cold chicken cutlets, then the cook time is going to vary. It may take longer and it probably won't be an even cook. So you want to work with completely thawed and the chill removed from the meat. You can place it on the counter for about 20 minutes before you start to coat and dredge it. That really helps the cook time. I'm going to be placing all of the cooked cutlets on this baking sheet with parchment paper. And it's gonna take several minutes on each side. And you're looking for a deep golden color to these cutlets, just like this. So this one's ready and I'm gonna place it on my baking sheet. You can do this uh, with on top of a rack in a baking sheet or paper towels, it's up to you. So now I'm just gonna repeat the process for all of my cutlets. And I forgot to mention a good fry temp would be around 350 degrees Fahrenheit for your cook oil. And I just have kind of like a shallow fry with maybe like a half inch of cooking oil or less. It definitely works for these because these are thinly cut. I'm going to garnish with freshly chopped parsley and I'll put this on the first two. And then when I fry the other two, I'm gonna add the fresh parsley and these are done. And this is how I made these easy chicken cutlets. This dinner is gonna be so good. My son requested this, by the way. Shout out to my son, love him. Let me show you what I did with a crown of broccoli. It's all I had and I'm gonna add cooking oil. I have these bro broccoli florets that I'm just gonna mix with this avocado oil and I'm just going to liberally season it with onion powder, salt, garlic powder. I'm also gonna add some salt-free lemon pepper, which I really love the zing of lemon pepper on broccoli, and smoked paprika. And I'm just going to shake it all over. I really didn't measure. And I'm just gonna use my clean hands, give it a really good mix. I like to roast this in the oven if I'm doing a lot, but since it's a small batch, going right into the air fryer. I'm going to air fry this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about eight to 10 minutes. 
and this broccoli is so good. So here is what one dinner plate looks like. This is going directly to my son. He loves this. So I hope you give these recipes a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.